previous sessions. Yeah, Mal, just stand in front of the camera. Yeah, it's selfie time, Mal. You too, also. You don't stand that close. You can stand back a little bit. For those of you who have missed previous sessions, many of them are now on our, our website, which is hkmkgh at gmail, I think it is. Uh, no, no, it's dot com. Uh, dot org, huh? Dot com. I think it's dot com. Maybe it's dot org, maybe. It's dot org, yeah. Dot org, check it out. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll write it down for anybody who wants it later. But we certainly have the last three or four of them, including Dr. Cook's last time, and uh, uh, the, the other two from this year, the dental one from Dr. Rubin and psoriasis from uh, infectious disease. And this one also will be available on, not only on YouTube, thanks to Howard, but on the website. So if you want to review anything, it will all be there. Our next session is going to be on Valentine's Day, would you believe, for the second February, Tuesday of February is Valentine's Day, and we're going to talk about heart disease, and we'll have our chief of cardiology, David Slotweiner, to come over to talk about that, and I recommend your coming. We haven't really decided on a topic, but it'll probably be very general. So now we're going to start. We usually start earlier, later, and so people will be trickling in. First speaker tonight has been here before our first year, and I, I really to bet how many people were here for that session about bariatric surgery. Okay, Bernie. Uh, Mary Grace Webb is the uh, Assistant Associate Director of Nutrition at New York Presbyterian Queens. She is a terrific speaker because I saw her to speak the last time. And she's going to talk about how to deal with your diet when you have elevated blood sugars and other things. She'll be glad to answer questions. And I quit there. Is there a point there? Okay. It's got, it's got, it's got a, a, you know, the red thing, you know, the laser on it also. Oh, right. Thank you. In front of the... Yeah, selfie. Just selfie. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I have a little PowerPoint, but we won't need it very much because it's very impromptu tonight. It, it actually brought some props. Talk to the mic. Oh, is, is it on? Is the light on? on? Okay, so talk into it. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see a little... I speak kind of softly, so... Yeah, I'm just better? try to keep it close to your mouth, then. Okay. So people okay. back. I'm sorry about that. Um, That's what it's for. I'm also happy to be here with my colleague, Dr. Tubaldi. Um, and hopefully this evening you'll learn... Some of this might be a little bit of review for you, but I'm going to go over some basic concepts about... I've called this sugar starches and other carbohydrates. How do they fit into a healthy diet? Um, now, I get lots of comments about carbs are so bad, you know, and we have to avoid carbs, and especially when you're uh, dealing with a condition like diabetes or obesity, and uh, it just seems like carbohydrates are like the worst thing that you can ever possibly eat. So we're going to dispel some of the myths tonight and hopefully enjoy um, your favorite carbohydrate items. You know, I have many, um, especially this time of the year. So uh, the first thing I wanted to talk, just talk about what carbohydrates are. And I want to emphasize that our bodies need energy from carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is the most important, most efficient source of nutrition for us. It's the fuel we run on. So uh, without it, we would really die. And most diets, years ago, Dr. Tibaldi will probably remember this, that we used to call diabetic diets ADA diets, American Diabetic Association diets. And now the term is really, that term is passe. We like to really focus on not cutting out carbohydrates, but controlling them, learning how to balance them. And I'll give you some simple techniques tonight. And though most of the time diets have to be individualized because we're all different people, we have all different activity levels, heights, weights, different medications we're on, especially if we have diabetes. But most of the time people with prediabetes or diabetes can eat around a considerable amount of carbohydrates per meal. Many times I hear that, I say, oh, they, some people, patients tell me, oh Mary Grace, I only have one slice of bread. I only have one slice of bread all day. And they think that's, they're kind of proud, and they think that that's a good thing. 
when actually they should be eating somewhere between three and five servings of carbohydrates per meal, some people even more. So um, I'll talk a little bit about how to recognize those portions. In front? Yeah, okay. selfie. Sorry. <laughs> selfie. <Eat> selfies. <laughs> um, okay, so the solution really isn't avoid all foods with sugar. That's another thing. I don't eat any sugar at all. We can talk a little bit about food labels and how sometimes people get confused when looking at labels um, to avoid sugar. You really should be watching total carbohydrate. And carbohydrates can be starches, they can be fruit, they can be milk, and they can be sweets. I'm going to show you something very simple. In my bag of tricks. Yeah, I'll put it on the table. If you don't remember anything from the session tonight, I want you to remember this. Remember how I said about carbohydrates are, are the most important fuel for our body? Well, what you want to remember is like these three balls that I have in my hand. These are the basic components of carbohydrate. This is what we need for real energy. The yellow, the simplest energy molecule, is glucose. And it comes by different names. In the hospital, we call it dextrose. You might have seen dextrose IVs. It's another name for this. One component, glucose. There's another molecule. There's actually three different molecules of energy, or sugar. The next is orange, and it's called fructose. <coughs> it's orange. I brought the orange ball because I thought, where do you think fructose comes from? Or what does it com comprise? Orange fruit, right. The blue one is called galactose. What do you think this sugar is found in? Milk. Milk, Milk right. So these three, think of these three balls. When food is broken down, believe it or not, all food, whether you consume a piece of bread or, or a, a piece of um, some rice or pasta or fruit or whatever, <coughs> it's all broken down into these three basic components. Now, when your body digests them, they're not saying, oh, wow, I got the glucose from a bagel, or I got a glucose from a croissant, it's <laughs> glucose. It's all broken down. Once we have the aesthetic pleasure of eating a croissant, or a bagel, or whatever we enjoy, or maybe just simply a plain piece of white bread. But our bodies see it as this, okay? The same thing with any of these other components, with fructose or galactose. Now, sometimes these simple molecules combine with each other. If you have a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule, what do you think you get? It's another common sugar that we all know and love. It's sucrose. Sucrose is what makes up table sugar, brown sugar, all of those granulated sugars that we like. This is sucrose, glucose and fructose put together. Some people don't realize the sugar we eat that we put in our coffee has some fructose in it. If we have two glucose molecules, this is maltose. It's not very common, you know, it's in malt flavoring beers and things of that. It's not too common to have just two glucose molecules together. But this is what's commonly referred to as a sweetener maltose. Sometimes you see that in products. When there are two, when there's a glucose and a galactose together, this makes lactose. And lactose is the sweetener that's in milk or yogurt. Some people can't digest these two molecules together, and that's where you get some problems. Now, sometimes you have long chains. In this case, it's yellow. 
This is long chains of glucose. What do you think this is? It's starch. Very good. So remember, our bodies are digesting these simple molecules. And eventually, they break down. They're either, we either consume them, foods that have disaccharides. Let me see if I can get a hold. Okay. So there's monosaccharides. These are the single sugar molecules, glucose, fructose, and galactose. There are two monosaccharides. Those are called disaccharides. That's where we just saw sucrose and lactose and maltose. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the shorter chain sugars because this has been getting a lot of publicity late, lately. You've probably heard of some of the controversy about fructose, high fructose corn syrup. I'll explain what that is. Um, when you have chains, short chains of fructose, Sometimes they're found in fruits and vegetables. Certain vegetables in particular are fruits like Jerusalem artichokes and bananas, wheat. Fructose, for some reason, when it forms a chain, is very hard for our bodies to digest. It's easy for glucose molecules to be broken down into energy, but somehow our body does not like long chains of fructose. The, our bodies like short chains of fructose, and especially fructose and glucose put together, but not fructose. This is, these are called fructooligosaccharides. Now, the problem, we're hearing a lot about high fructose corn syrup and all these problems with fructose. The real issue is digestive, not necessarily um, an issue with carbohydrate intolerance. So if you notice, some of these foods, a lot of people have some trouble tolerating them, and it can be. There's a new diet out. It's called a FODMAP diet, and that's really helping people with digestive problems to control their intake of these fructooligosaccharides. So just kind of remember that. There's nothing wrong with fructose. Actually, it doesn't raise your blood sugar too, um, too high um, as much as some other um, sugars. But the short chains of fructose can be very difficult for people to digest. Maltodextrins are also shorter chains of glucose molecules, and those you sometimes find in foods. Um, now, let me just talk about high fructose corn syrup for just a moment, because it is something that a lot of you see um, packages of bread and cereals and stuff say, Hi, no high fructose corn syrup. Well, as we just found out, fructose is a very common monosaccharide. And it can be good for us in certain, when, when it's in small amounts. And it can be bad if it's on a long chain. But generally speaking, what is the issue with high fructose corn syrup? Well, I think people got confused for a while with these fructooligosaccharides. And when they found out that um, manufacturers are in this country making corn syrup with um, a high fructose, con uh, high fructose content, they got a little nervous. And then, of course, when we get a little nervous in this country and we want to make money, we start to, you know, make all kinds of claims. The other thing to, to realize is that cane sugar is made from sugar cane, right? And sugar, and it's, again, remember whether it's corn syrup or um, sugar cane, the sugars end up like this, sucrose and fructose. The cane sugar is not really native to our country. Cane sugar is made in tropical regions, you know, <coughs> in order for the sugar cane to grow. So there are tariffs that are imposed on the cane sugar manufacturers because they have to be, cane sugar has to be imported into this country. In the United States, we grow a lot of corn. We're a, cor we're a country with a climate that corn is a common crop. And you get corn syrup from corn is a, um, is a um, 
polysaccharide. And what they found out is if you've ever, you know, eaten the ear of corn, it starts as starchy, but you can get as, um, um, you know, sometimes the corn can be a little sweet, you know, especially in the summertime. And that's where this, these chains of glucose come through. But manufacturers, you know, the savvy chemist, have found that if they break down the starch that's in corn, they can make the sweeter corn syrup. Actually, corn syrup contains no fructose at all. It's just shorter chains of glucose. But what happens is they treat it with enzymes. And apparently when the manufacturers treat the corn syrup with some enzymes, that raises the amount of fructose. It just causes a chemical reaction. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's just a manufactured kind of sugar. So some people, wisely, they'd rather consume natural forms of sugar, sugars that are coming from fruits or from um, um, another you know, form that's quite common. Do you know the only one sugar that's absolutely pure and unadulterated and unprocessed? It's very common. What do you think? All of you have probably eaten it from some time and maybe even today. Honey. Honey. That's the only unprocessed form of sweetener that is available in the world. Every other sugar, whether it's table sugar from canes, cane, you know, or beets, whether it's the corn syrup, whether it's, um, there's another natural sugar called agave, it's closest to honey. Where does that come from? Anybody know? Cactus. Cactus. Agave. And what's, what cactus? Tequila. Where well, we make tequila, I should say we make tequila from the agave plant, from the syrup. So, so anyway, all these sugars are processed. So the thing with the high fructose corn syrup is all you have to remember is it is another form of sugar. Whether it's good or bad or indifferent, the jury is out. A lot of claims about the high fructose corn syrup are, un are not really valid. We do have some concerns about people's consumption of fructose, especially large quantities because of some digestive issues. But the really interesting thing is that some people attribute it to the amount of obesity in this country. So they're saying if you don't eat any high fructose corn syrup, you're going to reduce your weight. And sometimes that can be very misleading. You'll see labels, no high fructose corn syrup, but you'll see cane sugar or honey. Same similar sweeteners in your body that they see it like this. In Australia, completely different climate, right? Completely different. Right now they're enjoying summer, so it's in a whole different hemisphere. Australians are becoming as fat as Americans, and they have no high fructose corn syrup at all. As a matter of fact, their intake of fructose is very, very, very low. So go figure. So bottom line is what I want to leave you tonight with is that carbohydrates are not bad. Actually, we need them for energy. They're different forms. As a professional nutritionist, I can guarantee you the real issue with carbohydrates is that our portions can be too high. And our tastes are so much that sometimes we don't want to restrict them. Um, the best thing I can do for you is to leave you with a reminder that you really can't fool yourself, especially if you have diabetes, because we need carbohydrates to live. We need the energy. But sometimes we do have some trouble controlling the amounts, right? Especially some of our favorite foods. But remember that sometimes we cut back too much. Like that gentleman who said, Mary Grace, I only eat one slice of bread every day. And he thought that that was a good thing. And actually, as a nutritionist, I was thinking about malnutrition, that he probably wasn't getting enough energy. No wonder he was kind of weak. He was probably craving a lot of food later. Probably with his insulin, if he was on insulin, that was really not um, performing well or his body wasn't getting enough fuel to um, cover the insulin. So it sets up a whole cascade of problems. 
Um, there are, if we're able to control portions, measuring cups are a really good friend once you're learning how to um, control your carbohydrates. And it's important to use things like measuring cups. But you can also use your hand. This is about a cup. A fist is about a cup. And a cup is usually about two servings of some kind of a grain, like a rice or a pasta. So that can be, and that's, so remember when I said most people can have about three to five servings of carbohydrate a meal. Sometimes just use your fist. You see, I see kids nowadays, they're learning it in school to use your fist as a, and I was wondering, the first time I saw it, I don't know, you know, not, you know how they do, the kids do that knocking thing, you know. But no, they were, I was glad to find out that the teachers were teaching them some simple, you know, portion control tools. Um, hands, too. This is about the size of a, like a tortilla. Uh, one tortilla, one small tortilla is about um, the size of your, your um, palm. Um, fruit, too. It's a small piece or about a half a cup of juice. Milk is a cup, again, using your, your um, fist. And um, when you're looking at a label, you have to look at total carbohydrate. Don't look at sugars. It's going to be, the label will be changing this year. So um, added sugars will have to be listed. But added sugars are those that the manufacturer adds for sweetener. Remember, there are sugars that are inherent to the food, like the sugar that's in a fresh piece of fruit or milk, um, or even in small amounts in um, grains. So uh, total carbohydrate is the real important distinction. And finally, one of the easiest things to do to control your portions is to use the plate method. You could do this any time at home. And basically, all you have to do is cut your plate in threes. Cut it in half. And the biggest half should be non-starchy fruits and vegetables, green leafy vegetables, salad. Um, even things like carrots and green beans, those fall into that category. A quarter of your plate, that's the portion of starchy vegetables that you should be having, generally speaking. Everybody is different, like I said. But, and then the other quarter is protein. How many times I know when I plan a meal, when you think about the protein, you think about the protein being like half of the plate, right? Maybe even the whole plate. You know, and if you're like my husband, he's like, do I have to have that one green bean, you know, <laughs> or <laughs> fills it all up with that steak, you know. But really, to healthy eating is half a plate with nice crunchy vegetables, um, cooked or raw, it doesn't matter. But the quarter is the starchy vegetables and very, um, if you see the salad or the fruit salad for dessert. It's one of the easiest ways to figure out whether you're eating a healthy meal without having to count anything or measure anything. Um, so keep that in mind. So um, the basic, I hope that you've learned at least some simple techniques about distinguishing carbohydrate tonight. And please, enjoy them. Enjoy um, everything. Food is one of the main pleasures in life. And when you start to restrict food, you're really taking away something that is, um, you know, a real God-given uh, blessing for us. So enjoy food, enjoy eating, and especially enjoy those carbohydrates. Thank you.